Action City Commission, Action County Board of Commissioners order. Um, can we start off with that? We'll let uh, Eric say the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible with liberty and justice for all. Okay, any public comments? Seeing on uh, reading and approval of the minutes. Is everybody reading the minutes? I've read them, I've had no additions or corrections. Is that a motion? I'd second, I'd second the motion, Mr. Chairman. To approve I'll make the motion Senate. first. It's, it's been moved and seconded. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Passes for zero. Um, commissioner comments and committee reports. I had a um, area agency on aging meeting by Zoom meeting last Thursday. Uh, right now we're dealing with the uh, health care issue, <laughs> uh, with the uh, health insurance issue, with the agency, um, that and the COVID funding. Also, the uh, agency is starting to, uh, they're going to build a new facility near the hemisphere, the old Walmart there in Hiawatha. Um, so some of that ground work is start, uh, not literally ground uh, work, but the uh, basics, getting everything, you know, the financing and everything in order. Uh, that's what we dealt with. That's all I have. <clears throat> I have I have nothing, but Commissioner Noel, can uh, you discuss any of the stuff that you uh, learned from the Monday night meeting at Effingham or is that? Um, I, yeah, I can. I forgot about that meeting. Um, in, uh, I believe it was 16, the city of Effingham changed their format uh, on the sales tax funding from being held at a percentage uh, like uh, the city of Atchison was paying. Uh, well, At Atchison actually is paying a static amount, a fixed amount, plus the uh, addition of the CPI. So FEM mirrored that in an agreement which they signed, I believe it was in 16. Well, especially with a small city and the funding being more volatile for small cities, they felt like they were going to get locked into that static figure with the sales tax could be dropping a lot. So I think it was more of that they're wanting to go back to the pain, like a Lancaster or a Lancaster's paying 100%, but Huron and Muscoda agreement, which is paying the per same percent as what the city of Atchison pays compared to what they've uh, taken in. So that would fluctuate from year to year instead of being a static figure it would be a percentage so they don't they could actually come out even I mean if, if you had the static figure and your sales tax dropped you know they may have uh, pay a hundred percent or or even could be obligated for more so I think it was uh, just a uh, we want to switch back to the original agreement I couldn't see any problem with it who did they have an agreement with there? Uh, they had signed a resolution, uh, and I have it somewhere, and uh, that mirrored, and it was a multi-year, it's, it's fashioned after the city of Atchison's resolution, uh, and instead of just being a year-to-year -year with a percentage rate, they had locked into a static figure so it's the same thing as the city of atchison they it came to, they came to agreement among themselves but we aren't part of the agreement right uh, basically yeah okay thank you so but, make sure that. yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. It, I, i'm not for sure why they changed to begin with 
I think maybe it was just so it would be more even from year to year. They knew what they were going to be obligated, not thinking of like the current situation where we have sales tax fluctuating and they would <clears> still be obligated to that static figure. So um, according, to our, <clears throat> according to our analysis, they're paying less than they should be. Um, These are the numbers that were put together in Excel spreadsheets. Um, okay, I haven't seen anything recently. Now, in 20 or 2019, uh, they missed several of their payments just from a, a glitch that they didn't realize that they weren't paying, but they made it up in 2020. So that's thrown some of the percentages off because it came in in 2020 and not 2019. Bill, do you have anything at all? Anything to report? No, I have nothing. I was just wondering what Commissioner Noel found out. Sorry uh, about that. Sorry about that meeting. Would remind everybody on, on June 15th at 4 30, there's going to be a meeting. It's either quasi Zoom or in person. In order to be in person, you have to be an elected official or a key uh, employee doing the analysis. Of for the joint communication. So if some commissioners will be attending by Zoom, some will be attending in person, it's kind of each individual, and we're gonna to try to, we're gonna pass the joint communication board's recommended budget for 2021. So you can look forward to that on uh, June 15th, 4.30 p.m. The physical meeting is at City Hall, correct? Correct. Okay, moving right along. Um, Steve Kaplinger, you're up. How are you doing? I'm sorry I didn't wake you up today. Oh, wow. <laughs> I'm doing well. There's a little lag for me. Okay. So far out here, you know. Yeah, I understand. And um, I'm, I'm assuming that everyone had see the materials that I forwarded to Michelle. Mm-hmm. Does anybody have any questions that they'd like to know? Um, I know it was pretty well presented. I don't remember the amount that you asked for, Steve. Pardon me? I don't remember the request that you made, and the amount you made. $10,000. Yeah, basically, it's the, the same. Um, it's a same. Yeah, you know, the same as the year before and several years before. It, as I mentioned in our letter, um, we're um, we're playing a little ca catch up, um, you know, trying to maintain some resemblance of uh, organization and order, you know, with the loss of Chris, and it it's been a little bit of a challenge, but we seem to be catching on, and um, and like I mentioned, uh, at this point in time, financially, we don't feel that we have to. Um, go out and recruit anybody that's qualified because our the level of funding that we're at now when we look at our historic amount of um, uh, tax revenue and donations and grants and things it um, it doesn't seem probable that we'll be able to hire a full-time person in the future so we're exploring doing everything that we can with volunteer as much as possible we would like to build a relationship with the college and um, try to uh, maybe encourage some of those in the history department to become involved and uh, we may need to pay some stipends in the future to try to get that kind of help. It's the only kind of help I think that we're able to afford is going to be temporary where we don't have any um, costs associated with, like health insurance and such things. We're trying to be very, very frugal and yet still accomplish some things. There's a, there's a large amount of work that needs to be done and we're hoping to develop a, a good um, a volunteers that are willing to come in on a schedule, man the museum and help us with some of our uh, digitizing efforts. I think you have a challenge. There's no question about that, Steve. It's, it's a difficult job. I don't think people realized how much Chris was doing 
for basically a half-time pay. And I think all of us want to protect our history. Uh, our cultures, that's an important part. Yeah. One of the things that uh, has been kind of a, a I guess, a, a pet project for me is, is that, yes, we collect a lot of history, but we don't have it in a condition that's easily shared with the community. You know, a lot of uh, research type information, you know, photographs, information, documents, and really let people check out you know, original documents, but we would like to get them in a position where they're digitized and perhaps someday put them in into a web type environment where it's searchable and people can access that to the internet. Things like um, a much more efficient way to handle a collection as opposed to try to um, because we really don't have the space to bring it out and make it uh, at the depot. And the building that we have on North 6th Street is not really a very pleasant environment to be in on a day like today, or maybe a day in the middle of January. <laughs> it's... Yeah, I've got a question, Steve. Um, according to your budget request, it says 10,000 and it's the same as what it's been, but I have you down for 7,500 last year. Is that a typo on somebody's part or? Um... We, we received 10,000 from the county last year. Okay. Now, so far that's through this year, we've received $4,558 and 11 cents. Um, maybe you're looking at some timing issues there. Because I, I showed that we received every penny that you promised us. Okay, well, I'll, I'll double check on that just to see what, that's the reason I, at the beginning there, I thought there was something different from my figures from what you said it was the same, so. Yeah, yeah 10,000. Um, I'm, I'm not, when I do my budget for um, like the cemetery, for example, uh, we always kind of make an allowance for maybe uncollected taxes or something, but um, I guess the way that this works within county, you guys pay us exactly the amount. So, so if, if you're a little short on collections, we seem to be getting 100%. So that we're appreciative. I don't think that's the case in, in all all of the departments. I don't know what the difference would be. We do, we do have some projects that we're going to try to use this year. Uh, as I mentioned, that in fact, I'd sent you a copy of a newsletter that we put out last about our fire engine. And we have been receiving some donations towards that extra expense. Um, I mean, if it wasn't for the county and for the good graces of the city of Atchison, uh, the museum could not exist. Um, there's a, a large in-kind contribution that comes to us from the city of Atchison because of course they technically own the building and maintain it and keep it in an environment where it can be used. It's um. It's a, it's a, I don't know what the city actually spent per year maintaining the building for us, but it's, it has to be a significant amount of money that they, they're paying towards our benefit for this museum. So if it wasn't for that, we would be dead in the water. I didn't hear, hear you, Jack. I'm, I'm sorry, sorry, I was muted. It's nice to see a sharing of uh, costs in that regard. I'm sure they have at least $10,000 uh, in that building here. Yeah, I, I, it's, probably, it's probably very significant. Yeah. I mean, even though in the beginning, the Historical Society was um, you know, very much involved in procuring the building for the city, and we did donate a considerable amount of money towards its, its purchase, but that pales in the... Um,
the whole scheme of things or what it takes to keep. Okay, anything else for Steve? Steve, I certainly, I certainly appreciate your uh, continued support and appreciation of what it is that the society does. Okay, thank you very thank you. much. Thank you, Steve. Okay, shall, shall I sign off now? I'm sorry. Moving right yeah. along, Wes Lanter, you guys are up. Bonnie, you Wes, and Lori, Bonnie. Bonnie, y'all popped up at once. There you go. Like the Brady Bunch. You look it up. <laughs> <laughs> How are you all doing today? Yeah, most of you guys are not old enough to know what the Brady Bunch is. Oh, oh, yeah. I don't know what the Brady Bunch is. I, I watched it. <laughs> okay, Lori, you want to start off? Or you want me to? I don't care. So um, we presented phase three of our plan um, to you. Um, we're trying to do gatherings of, or we're doing gatherings of 45. Um, we're asking that people adhere to the personal hygiene guidelines and stay home if you're sick. Um, so on-site staffing is um, unrestricted and non-essential travel may resume. There are still um, just a couple of things um, in our order that um, as far as like restaurants, we're still asking that they maintain the six foot distance, but that's really um, what the governor wants anyways. Um, it's just kind of, we just kind of just wrote it out so that people could see exactly what, you know, for that business, what we were expecting. Um, and then outdoor venues um, or large indoor, um, if they can maintain the six foot space, um, they can have a capacity of 250 or more. Actually, that's not true. That's closed. That's, <laughs> that's the next phase. I'm sorry. Um, I do know that Friday we have um, on our conference call that we have with the other health departments, um, KDADS is supposed to be on that call to give us some guidance as to what to do with nursing homes, um, assisted living, um, and that sort of thing. And so I'm kind of waiting on that guidance um, in order to help them to get going too. Okay, so this order will go into effect tomorrow morning at 12.01 a.m. Um, and it will expire on June 23rd um, at 11.59 p.m. So we would be back before the commission next Tuesday the 23rd to discuss the step moving into the next phase after this one. Um, <clears throat> and like she said, everybody should be open at this point except for the outdoor large festivities, fairs, festivals, carnivals, and swimming pools and summer camps. Everything else across the county should be open and operating. Honey, you got anything to add or? Be quiet today, okay, so. Quiet for me is good. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, the chair would entertain a motion to adopt emergency order of local health officer 2020-2020 Zero six effective at twelve oh one a.m. Um, June tenth and going through June twenty third at eleven fifty nine p.m. We got that right. Okay. Yes. I'll make the motion. I so Mr. Ch I second that, Mr. Chairman. Okay, so it's been moved by Eric and seconded by Bill. Uh, any further discussion? Seeing none, I will assume you're ready to vote. All in favor, single form is saying aye. Aye. Passes three to zero. Hey, thanks a lot. Thank you guys. Thanks for doing. Thanks so much. Real fast hey. before I get off of here, I want to I sent all three of you along with the rest of our county employees an email. Uh, we're in, in a chance for high severe weather tonight. Um, high winds, heavy rain, and tornadoes are definitely a possibility. We're circled on the map for that. Be aware of the weather tonight. Um, and then overnight, we're supposed to have 40 mile an hour 
winds with gusts up to 60. So just want to get out to the public to be aware, be prepared for the storms that are happening in tonight. Okay. Take that into consideration. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, moving right along, uh, old and unfinished business before the board. I'm not aware of any. Uh, County Councilor Upton. I, I don't have anything uh, anything specific to add. Uh, okay, executive sessions. Uh, I think we have an executive session. Does someone want to make a motion? Um, I'm looking for the language. Executive session of non-person elected employee KS-75. I'm not finding the in my emails. Should have started this earlier. Pat, can you send it to me again? Oh, here, I found it. Let me get it opened up. Okay, this is for personnel. Like I'll move it to the Board of County Commissioners recess into executive session at 1.20 p.m. to discuss personal matters of non-elected personnel as allowed by KSA 75-4319B1. The executive session will be conducted on, in a breakout room using the Zoom platform. The purpose of the closed session is to protect the privacy rights of the employee. The board will come out of executive session at, what, 20 minutes? What do, we, what do, what do you think? Uh, How many? Yeah, 20 minutes. 20 minutes will be uh, 1.40 p.m either on the Zoom platform or in the commission room, first floor courthouse in open session. And those present will be the county commissioners, county counselor, Pat Henderson, and uh, Joe Bowen. And, and Jamie Madison. Oh, Jamie Madison. I'm sorry, I didn't know she was participating. Okay, and Jamie Madison. That's the motion. Do you want a second? I second that. All in favor, second. I Talk second that, aye. Chairman. Aye. Aye. Passes three to zero. So we need to wait for the breakout room. Who does that? Is that a Michelle thing or a Jamie thing? Or? Michelle, I think. For anybody that doesn't know, there'll be a message that tells you to go into the breakout room. This is where we need the Jeopardy music. Do, 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 do. I hate it.
any public comments? Uh, if commissioners have no comments, I'll just call for a motion to adjourn. I'll make a motion we adjourn. Do I have a second? I don't know, I'm kind of speechless, but I'll second it. All in favor, probably say aye. Aye. See you next time, see that channel. Uh, is our meeting with the city Monday night? It's Monday night, 430 I guess. Okay, so that is, that is a regular meeting with, the, but we will be able to vote at that meeting, correct? I don't know because I haven't had any communication. Um, well, it, 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 excuse me. <laughs> it, it is a special meeting, but you will be able to vote at that meeting. Uh, you don't have to, you, you don't vote together. Just the, if the uh, county commission wanted to take an action at that meeting, you could do that just as any other meeting. Is there any special? I mean, do we have to like separate from them to vote or I mean, how do we do that? Or uh, do we just have to say as the county commission now we vote? Uh, I've never been part of a larger group with another entity involved when we would have the power to vote. That's the reason I've got a little questions on that. Yeah, you know, I think that's probably really more a matter of politeness and protocol than it is a legal requirement. Um, I, I would say you'd probably just play it by ear. If nothing else, you could wait till that meeting is over and then uh, adjourn your meeting to, even if you wanted to go to a different place even to conduct your vote, you could do that. That would be up to you, but that's, I, I don't think that's really a legal requirement. That's just uh, kind of politeness or, but I, I can't think of the right word, but, um, just a matter of a protocol. You, yeah, exactly. I was just, since that's, I've never been involved with that. I was just kind of trying to get it right in my head. What, how, uh, how we need to uh, proceed. Probably I would call for a motion. Somebody would second it and we vote. You know, you know, I think we can do the same meeting. If you want to, want to break that session, we could. I prefer to do it right there on the spot. So. That that meeting is not going to be online, right? We're, we are to be there at the commission room at the city. Is that right? Yeah. yeah okay. Well, some it's of us. Available for, it's available for the public. I, thought, I plan on zooming. So it will be either there in the room or via Zoom, but it's, it, is that what you're asking, Pat? <laughs> I, I I'm not sure, are, are we supposed to go, physically go to the meeting at City Hall or do you want, do you want me on Zoom for it? It's, I think it's a matter of personal preference. Okay. If you go in person, you gotta be able to pass a temperature test. You probably have to be wearing a mask. I'm not sure about the rules of the city, but uh, eventually we'll probably hear those uh, before Monday, before Monday. So. We'll see what happens. Okay. So it's um, removed and seconded. Uh, all in favor to adjourn, signify to say aye. 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 Unless I already did it once before. Aye. Okay. I'll see you guys later. Bye bye.